Shalom Israel vänner. Välkomna till Karen Kajemet. Jag heter Max Federman. Idag har vi glädjen att ha ambassadör Ilan Bendov som gäst. Varsågoda. Welcome Mr. Ambassador to this program. Uh, we will start to uh, talk about the Abrahamic peace accord. Uh, congratulations, I should say. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> what do you think that this will mean for the region? Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, and uh, the meaning uh, of, of the, uh, the agreements is a historic one. It's, uh, it's a historic uh, change in the Middle East. It's a historic uh, breakthrough in, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, I believe that it is, it is even a uh, turning point in the history of the Middle East. Uh, so it, it has uh, a lot of significance. We are very happy to have them. And as I said, it's, it's, it's a real turning point in the, in the history of, of the Middle East. Can you describe the reasons why this is happening right now? Well, the Middle East is, uh, is changing. Um, uh, there are many reasons for this, uh, but I believe that uh, many Arab countries, not only the, the two Arab countries that have now signed the agreements with, 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 with Israel, but it goes beyond this, many Arab countries have reached the conclusion that uh, they can gain much more from peace with Israel and from cooperation with Israel and for having trade relations with Israel, scientific relations with Israel, cultural relations with Israel, they can gain much more from this than uh, what we had until now. The, the, as I said, the Middle East is changing, so, and, and, uh, and this is part of this change. The boycott uh, has been in the region, the Arabic boycott, since the 60s. So now we see a historical change. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I believe that uh, 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 all countries in the world, but especially our neighboring countries, are watching Israel and they see uh, the Israeli economy, They're, they see uh, the Israeli um, a capabilities in, uh, in research, in innovation, in science, in technology. And uh, Israel, uh, in, in, in many ways, uh, especially when it comes to innovation, as you know, uh, Israel is a major player, a major international player. And uh, as I said, many countries reached, uh, reached the conclusion. Uh, by the way, also, of course, many European countries uh, have reached the conclusion that, uh, uh, that Israel is an important player and, uh, uh, and it it's worthwhile uh, cooperating with it. Uh, Sweden, uh, the media in Sweden has not reported so much about it. They have, they have been, there have been articles and, and so on. But have you heard anything yeah. from from the foreign ministry? Have they congratulated you? Well, there was a, uh, a slight, there was a reaction by the foreign minister. Uh, but I think that if you look at the whole picture, including the, uh, the media uh, in, in Sweden, I think that uh, they do not uh, uh, appreciate uh, uh, as much as they should the significance, the historical significance and the historical meaning of, of, this, of this breakthrough, which is, as I said, a major change in the history of the Middle East. Why is that? Well, there are, there are a few reasons. Uh, a, I, I would say that uh, they, uh, there is a trend here in Sweden to watch, to analyze the Middle East or uh, especially Israel only from this very narrow uh, a angle of, uh, a, of the uh, Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Uh, this is a mistake. It's not that the, the conflict is, uh, should be ignored, certainly not. But uh, I think that one should uh, look at the whole picture to zoom out in the Middle East and to look at the, whole, at the whole picture and to understand that the region is changing. 
and that there are changes and you cannot uh, remain with a policy that you have shaped uh, 20, 30, even 40 years ago. The world is changing, the Middle East is changing. Israel has some challenges, and we'll talk about Corona uh, in a moment, but uh, other regional uh, challenges is Hezbollah in the north, and also yeah. Hamas and, and Islamic Jihad in, in the south. Yeah. Can you say, say something about this? Of course. Uh, the biggest challenge and the common denominator both to Hezbollah and to uh, Hamas and all other uh, terrorist organizations is, of course, the origin uh, lies, of course, in, in Tehran, in Iran. Uh, Iran is, uh, since the revolution in Iran, uh, Iran is trying to become a dominant power in the Middle East. And it works uh, by proxies. And we see Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, and other terrorist organizations. And as a matter of fact, if you look today at the Middle East, wherever you see violence in the Middle East, you see Iranian presence. It starts in uh, Iraq, and in Syria, in Lebanon, in Yemen, uh, in Libya, uh, wherever there is uh, the, there are the, where, wherever there is violence, you see Iran. Uh, on one hand, Iran is uh, still trying to uh, uh, working on its uh, nuclear capabilities. Iran is building a nuclear capability, a nuclear nuclear bomb. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they develop uh, long-range missiles uh, and they support terrorism all over the world. Um, if you look at what they're doing in Syria, uh, as we know, they supported uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the slaughter which uh, Bashar al-Assad has done uh, in Syria, and they are now trying to reach uh, permanent presence in, in Syria. Uh, this is in addition to what they have already done in, in Lebanon through via, as I said, via the proxy, via Hezbollah. Now, Hezbollah uh, is having uh, uh, between 100,000 and 130,000 rockets and missiles aimed at Israel. They, uh, uh, their bases, uh, they hide the weapons within this, the uh, civilian population in the villages in the southern Lebanon and in the cities, including, of course, Beirut. And uh, um, Iran, via Hezbollah, via a, 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 um, a Hamas, is the main power of destabilization in, in, in the Middle East. Uh, they're a threat not only to Israel, but uh, to the whole Middle East and, and beyond. Let's talk about yeah. also about Corona. Uh, Israel has yeah. experienced its second lockdown now. Uh, can yeah. you describe the challenges? Yeah. Uh, well, needless to say that it's uh, it's a huge challenge. Uh, we are currently in a, a rather difficult situation in terms of uh, uh, new cases. It's a huge uh, challenge. We are indeed, uh, uh, as we speak, uh, still in uh, during the uh, second uh, wave and the second uh, lockdown. Uh, it's uh, it's a huge challenge. It's it is of of, of course also a economic challenge, uh, but I believe that we will uh, get over it. It's it's not easy, uh, but we'll we'll get over it. Uh, other challenges is is that there are demonstrations and there are also uh, discussions that can lead to. It seems to a fourth election in a very short time. Do you think there, be, there will be a fourth election in Israel? It is difficult to, uh, uh, to say in this stage, but uh, as in every uh, democracy, uh, there are disputes and there is a coalition and opposition and there is a very a, uh, a, a lively discussion and, uh, and yes, and also difficulties uh, between uh, various parts of, of society. Uh, and of course, the uh, uh, corona is not, it's a crisis. It's a crisis all over the world. 
And of course, uh, this crisis uh, doesn't make things dif uh, more, uh, doesn't make things easier. So uh, I don't know if we are uh, heading towards uh, new elections. It's difficult to say. Uh, but uh, as you very well know, the, the uh, roots uh, of uh, Israeli uh, a democracy uh, are uh, very fundamental and uh, I, Israel, Israel's democracy uh, will cope with it, uh, I'm absolutely sure. Max Fehrman and I met with uh, Isaac Herzog, the chairman for the world chairman for the Jewish agency. And he described the history of Sweden with peace in 200 years and, and then the history of Israel uh, with uh, several wars uh, during the short history. And he said that there is a gap here that needed to be uh, understood. Yeah. Can you comment? Absolutely. I, I wouldn't uh, use the word peace damage because I don't believe that uh, in, any, in any way peace can, can damage anyone, on the contrary. But uh, uh, it's not a secret that uh, we still have uh, gaps and we still have uh, our differences. And we would certainly uh, want, need and want to see uh, a much more uh, balanced Swedish policy when it comes to Israel. Uh, it is very much, uh, it is still very much balanced, uh, 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 biased, uh, and we would like uh, Sweden to become, as I said, uh, uh, much more closer uh, to, uh, to where we are uh, in terms of understanding the basic security needs of the State of Israel. Uh, in terms of understanding where we live and in terms of understanding that our neighboring countries or our, neighbor, uh, our neighboring uh, players in the Middle East uh, are uh, Hezbollah and Hamas and uh, Jihad Islami and ISIS and Al-Qaeda and uh, unfortunately not uh, Denmark and uh, Finland uh, and Norway and uh, we expect here a much better understanding of our unique uh, position in the Middle East as the only democratic state uh, in the region among uh, so many uh, terrorist organizations and, and among uh, a state which is called Iran, which calls for the destru destruction of the state of Israel. Do you see any light in the tunnel when it comes to the swedish israel relations? Well, let's, let's say that uh, we, as, uh, uh, as the Embassy of Israel, are trying very much to bring, to, I would say, uh, deepen the, the dialogue uh, between the two countries. And uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic uh, because the dialogue is, is oh, it's first of all a, a um, political dialogue. But I think that if we look over uh, overall on the relations, especially the economic relations and, this, and uh, in the field of uh, research and development and innovation, then uh, we are very optimistic. Of course, uh, the political side should follow also. And, and here, I believe that um, we have still a lot of work to do. Thank you for coming here. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much. And shalom. Mm. Shalom, Israelvänner. Jag heter Max Federman, representerar Keren Kajemet. Vi har en svår situation nu i Israel på grund av coronasmittan. Hjälp oss att hjälpa de fattiga, de äldre, de utsatta i Israel med matpaket. Vi behöver din hjälp. Tack. Hjälp de nödställda i Israel. Du kan swisha. Eller donera via Bankiro. Märk din gåva, Mathjälp. Varmt tack för din gåva.